Hello, this is the streaming service with me, Justin Hill, with another episode of the handiest TV guide on the internet. I'll give you a rundown on everything worth watching that has landed on streaming services recently, plus catch you up on all the behind the scenes news that you may have missed. This week, something old, something new, the Christmas movies that are worth watching, plus Megan and Harry drop some more grenades in part two of their docuseries, but first... Have I convinced John Krasinski and Emily Blunt to move to Australia? Whether you love John Krasinski as Jim on The Office or the dad in A Quiet Place, or maybe you're like me and you've been busting for season three of the CIA agent series Jack Ryan on Prime Video, can I just tell you, this man has done a full Chris Pratt and is every inch the Hollywood leading man in real life. There is just something about these guys. I don't know if it's their hair or their skin. I don't know, but I tell you this for free. I am going to find out. Now, ahead of season three of Jack Ryan dropping, I caught up with John and we talked about the possibility of him and his wife, Emily Blunt, moving to Australia. And even though I love them with all of my heart, they could possibly take over when the Hemsworths are out of town as our favourite family. Where do you hope this show goes beyond season three? I mean, could we see it come to Australia? Could there be some espionage going on down here. We should have come down to Australia sooner and then we would have just parked ourselves here. Right. <laughs> just parked ourselves here and done it all here. I don't know why we didn't. No, we've already shot season four. So we shot three and four back to back. So yeah, four is coming out. Five maybe. Okay, that's what he wants. I had this great like plan that you and Em could move here and give the Hemsworths a run for their money because like... <laughs> You know, Elsa and, and Chris, you know, they're kind of our special. But maybe you could come no, and, like, no. take if over. If we did move here, it would only be out of competition. <laughs> only out of competition. No, they've got this market cornered. But right, right. we'll come visit anytime. This is beautiful. Okay, so, like, I'm not hearing no, right? Season three of Jack Ryan sees Jack on the run himself from the CIA. And you know it's going to deliver all of the action, calculating, you know, because he's an analyst. And more as it drops on Prime Video on December 21. Speaking of relocating, one of the biggest themes in Harry and Meghan's Netflix docuseries was their move to LA and into a life of privacy. Well, with the exception of them doing a six-part series telling all of the private moments of their life. Anyway, all six episodes have now dropped and if you haven't watched it yet, give it a crack. While some people have claimed that it's a little bit slow, it definitely has its softer sides where we hear about Meghan and Harry's first date, the fact that they met on Instagram, which also gave away the fact that Harry has a secret account, but there is a more serious side as well. In part one, we heard them throw around accusations about stories being planted about them and how they've been hounded by the paps. And in part two, they had some of their friends who claimed to have been witness to this sort of behaviour come on and defend them. Meg became this scapegoat for the palace. And so they would feed stories on her, whether they were true or not, to avoid other less favourable stories being printed. You would just see it play out. Like a story about someone in the family would pop up for a minute and they go, I gotta make that go away. But there's real estate on a website homepage. There is real estate there on a newspaper front cover and something has to be filled in there about someone royal. Now, while it does seem a bit weird that they wanted a more normal life and have now done a tell-all series about their lives in the spotlight, I think the takeaway here is that Harry is just trying to prevent history repeating itself when he sees the woman that he loves being treated very similarly to his mother. You can make up your own mind and give Meghan and Harry a watch on Netflix now. This one gets six tiaras out of 10. Oh, it's that time of the year again where we rifle through our Christmas stocking to pull out our favourite Christmas movies, old and new. So my gift to you this year is which of them is worth a watch. Now, when it comes to classics, I cannot go past Home Alone 2. Now, Home Alone 2 specifically because it's all about Christmas time in New York. Yes, it does have a cameo from Donald Trump, but we can just fast forward past that. Now, you can catch that one on Disney Plus now. Or what about The Polar Express starring Tom Hanks? This is the perfect film to put on in the background when you wrap presents and pretend like it's not 30 degrees outside. You can find that one on Binge or on Apple TV. Now, when it comes to new movies, this year's favourite is Spirited, starring Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds. And it's a story that we know and love, a modern remake of A Christmas Carol. Now, Will plays the ghost of Christmas Present, who sets about to change his Scrooge, played by the very hunky Ryan Reynolds. It's got a sack full of jokes and some big musical numbers that are often completely unnecessary, but fun all the same. So out of all the people on the planet, murderers, people who do gender reveal parties. I'm the guy you're going to haunt. You know what? Forget it. I told you, the guy is a level 20 pain in the dickens. Come on, I can take this guy. I'm your ghost of Christmas present. 
la 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 la. I'm not watching your dramatic re encrapment Hey, I'm haunting you. You can't just run away from me when I'm haunting you. Hello? This is where real change begins. Oh, oh that's... Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, that... No, no, he's fine. He's good. Well, he's good. Well. You can check out Spirited on Apple TV Plus now. This one gets eight elves out of ten. Reaching into the vault this week, I can see that this month, one of our favourite, most iconic love stories of all time turns 26, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet. Now, based on the age-old tale of the Capulets and the Montagues, this is a modern retelling, well, a 1990s retelling, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes. Now, fun fact about this film, Claire Danes almost didn't play Juliet. The role nearly went to Natalie Portman. Also, apparently Leonardo DiCaprio flew himself to Australia at his own expense when he heard that Baz Luhrmann was still trying to convince the movie execs to let him do the movie. Oh, bless him. You can check out Romeo and Juliet on Apple TV and Disney Plus now. In announcements this week, so we've all heard that there are rumblings of another Princess Diaries sequel in the works, right? And Hathaway said that she's keen to head back to Genovia, but... I've got some news that we didn't really want to hear. So it seems as though any future sequels won't star stage and screen icon Julie Andrews. The Sound of Music star said in a recent interview that she's not even sure how it would go ahead given her age and Hathaway's age and that it's been so long since they even discussed it. Her words were, she's not sure it's possible. For the love of God, will someone from Disney please call Dame Julie Andrews and let her know that you're working on a script? I mean, we can't have the Princess Diaries without Queen Rinaldi. Although, the entertainment reporter in me thinks that if this were a ploy to drum up some PR before announcing the actual sequel, that's very clever, Julie. Regardless, one must keep hope. Now, while we wait for someone to announce that we're a secret royal heir to a castle and a fortune in a land far, far away, and for this sequel, you can check out Princess Diaries 1 and 2 on Disney Plus now. Now, also this week, Henry Cavill made a devastating announcement about his future as Superman. In short, it's over. Henry recently quit his popular Netflix show, The Witcher, to concentrate on a sequel to his Man of Steel movie and, spoiler alert, making a cameo in the Black Adam movie in his red cape. But now, the dream is over. Henry had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran this week to discuss the future of Superman after they were employed to plan out a universe and a series of movies and storylines very similar to what we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but obviously for the huge range of DC characters that we have to choose from, and this sadly doesn't include Henry Cavill as Superman. Now, Henry said in his post that he was actually instructed to make the announcement about his return by the studio, but plans have changed and he won't be returning. Now, while this is sad news, we're sure that there are new DC characters the fans have been waiting for that will make their debut. But in the meantime, you can check out Man of Steel on Stan, Binge and Foxtel now. Also, if you want a very quick rundown on everything that's worth watching for the month of December on each of your different platforms, you can follow me on TikTok at just underscore Hill now. That's all for this week from me. I will, of course, be back in 2023 with all of the latest news on the biggest TV shows and movies to hit your favourite streaming platforms. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the streaming service on the Listener app to be the first to hear it. And I will see you next time. Listener.